Peace. Shalom. Hatta. Welcome back for chapter three of the uh, of Balls of Fire. Or they actually call it Spring Training Three. The ancient Egyptian origin of baseball. Don't forget to screenshot so you can read along with me. Try Jesus, not me. Cause I throw hands, yeah. Don't forget the screenshot, baby. The Ancient Egyptian Origin of Baseball, Spring Training 3. I give thee all life and power, all stability, all health, and all joy when appearing as the king of Upper and Lower Egypt on the throne of Horus like Ra forever, creator God Shu, the edifice of Tahaka. Viewing ancient Egyptian signs through the lens of new science and human behavior shows that ancient Egyptian deities are signs for viral and bacterial DNA and proteins functioning along the ancient glycosis fermentation pathway in our cells. Because of the complexity of the genetic process, the pharaonic priesthood invented the game of baseball as a model for their microbiology. This suggests that sports, warfare, baseball, soccer, football, basketball, and so on is a sign and natural pattern reflecting the viral genetic survival message. For baseball, this claim is clearly a ceremonial tale. Or rather, it is clearly supported by the carvings of the subterranean edifice of Pharaoh Tahaka. Wearing a ceremonial tail, Pharaoh Tahaka pitches four of the first fastballs in history, symbolic of clearing away the enemies. The balls are born to protect the risen deity Osiris forever. Tahaka, 690 through 664 BCE was a 25th dynasty Nubian Ethiopian pharaoh whose edifices existed or exist between the sacred lake of Karnat and the south enclosure, enclosure wall of the great temple. 
the excavation of the subterranean edifice of Ta Pharaoh Taharqa began in 1907 through 08, when G. Lagrain, under the direction of G. Maspero, cleared the monument at Karnak. By 1969, J. Lafray had cleared and studied the mysterious Nilometer, a long, narrow structure connecting to a court leading to the east entrance of the edifice. Finally, Richard A. Parker, J. Leclant, and John Claude Goyon corroborated to collaborated rather to produce their 1979 work detailing the architecture of the edifice the plates of the scenes and texts and the translations of the text john claude goyon not only translated the text but also provided an interpretation of the egyptian ceremony that was performed in the ruined temp building of tahaka goyon notes that the theme date at least until the new kingdom but the evidence is that they date back to the old kingdom pyramid text circa 2520 bce and the said festival the ritual carved on the walls depict tohaka attired in a kilt with a triangular front and a ceremonial tail as he walks to the west carrying a round-headed mace of consecration. The pharaoh proceeds to four sacrificial animals and offers incense. Tahaka consecrates white bread in the hopes of having life forever, and then he walks north. He then enacts the well-known Egyptian ceremony of running with the oars or water jug that relates to good running capabilities of rising with the wind on the night buck journey through the netherworld. The night buck is represented on the walls with a steering oar fixed to a support on its stern. Figure 3.1, like Tahaka, 19th uh, dynasty pharaoh Seti the first is a Karian is carrying a round-headed mace from his temple at Abydos. By permission of Wikipedia GNU free documentation license. And figure 3.2 is the bovine goddess bat from the Narmer palette. Marija Gambutus pointed out that circa 6500 BCE, the bull was initially associated with the goddess becoming a male symbol through syncretity, syncretism, rather. Carved on the edifice wall is a winged sun disc, a hawk winged sun disc described as he of Adafu, the great king, lord of the sky, many colored or plumage, who comes out of the horizon, the lord of Maznet, may he give life Tahaka then proceeds to the chapel for the rites of the mound of the Hemi, where the carved lentils also show the wife of God walking in front of Pharaoh Tahaka. The scenes of the West show the wife of God. No, the scenes of the West also depict the Lady of Bats, the bovine goddess or form of the goddess Hathor, who is also on the front and back of the Narmer palette, a winged solar disc and two uray with the Egyptian Ankh, sign of life, at their necks decorate the west wall. On the center of the mound of Dahemi is a vaulted crypt symbolized by a wide band arching above two outstretched arms with hands open toward the sky, similar to Christ's stance on the cross 600 years later. This is the mound of the netherworld deity Osiris, who is rising. Another scene shows a priest bearing a shrine chest, who is being purified with an incense cup. Four priests and a divine Vateris called the wife of God bring the tabernacle of the god Amun, Ra Kamutef. 
Many scholars believe the wife of God represents the goddess Isis. Other scenes depict the divine votaress or Isis shooting four arrows to the four cardinal points as well as the solar rite where Taharka throws ball, balls from the mound of Osiris. Parker and colleagues explain the throwing of the ball ceremony. In actual time, the king ran toward each of the cardinal points in succession, throwing one of the four balls in each direction. But conventionally, he is represented as running toward the right, the four successive phases being concentrated into one. The officiating sovereign throws the four balls with his right hand while his left one holds a mace with a pear-shaped head. An understanding of the physical aspects of the rite and its significance is made possible, possible by some late papyri, papyri describing the ball-throwing ritual. They tell us that the four balls are made of clay and that they have the names of the protective divinities inscribed on them, and that one has to be thrown toward each of the cardinal points after the curses appropriated for that quarter of the world have been pronounced over it. The, the tutelary deities whose names are inscribed in the clay are paired off. South Ball, Amun, and Mantu, North Ball, Shu, and Tefnut, West Ball, Neith, and Wajet, East Ball, Sekhmet, and Bastet. These are the principal deities to carry out the curse on the enemy coming from one of the four directions. The magic bearer of their names, the balls, are defined by the text as the protection of Ra, born of him, or as the balls come into existence for Ra. Like the shooting of the arrows, the throwing of the balls is necessary to purify the universe, for it welcomes of a moon as he is reborn. In this Egyptian ritual, a blood sacrifice is made, incense is offered, Bread is consecrated. A tabernacle is presented for the God's divine re-entrance or resurrection. And two arms are stretched out like crisis arms on the cross. Then the wife of God, Isis, shoots four arrows with her bow. And the king conquers the enemy with his mace bat. And multiple balls that are fired from the mound of Osiris to the four quarters of the world in an act of purifying the universe. The bullpen of pitchers. The origin of baseball is ancient Egypt. On the dual-sided Nama palette, circa 3000 BCE, carved from a gray-green silt stone, the torso of the pharaoh wearing the white crown is to the front with his arm lifted and ready to strike his enemies with a mace. See figure 3.3. Above this striking pharaoh are two heavily horned bull heads with two additional bull heads on the other side of the pallet. Four bull heads suggest the four quarters of the sky and the bovine goddess Bat, a form of Hathor, the goddess, the bull goddess. This reminds one that baseball diamonds are often set up today relative to the four directions of space, and each team has a bullpen for pictures. Also, the Greek historian Herodotus, who visited Egypt in the 5th century BCE, said that a flash of lightning descended upon a special cow, causing her to receive Apis, a black bull with a diamond, white diamond on his forehead, an eagle image on his back, double hairs on his tail, and a scarab beetle under his tongue. Herodotus wrote that the Apis was the calf of a cow which is never afterwards able to have another.
This means that each special calf descended from a cow struck by lightning that was incapable of conceiving another offspring, a virgin cow. In genetics, this type of lighting, asexual virgin breeding for specific traits, is called cloning or forming genetically identical calves by nuclear implantation. As we shall see, viral replication or cloning of spherical forms describes the chemistry of ancient Egypt.